ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய்ராம் சாப்டர் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டெஸ்டட் அண்ட் நெவர் ஃபவுண்ட் வாண்டிங் காக்கா மஹாஜன் இஸ் ஃப்ரெண்ட் அண்ட் மாஸ்டர் பாந்திரா இன்சாம்னியா கேஸ் பாலா பட்டீல் நிவேஷ்கார் திஸ் சாப்டர் ஆல்சோ கண்டினியூஸ் வித் தி சப்ஜெக்ட் ஆஃப் தி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் அண்ட் எஃபெக்டிவ்னஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஊதி இட் ஆல்சோ கிவ்ஸ் டூ கேசஸ் இன் விச் பாபா வாஸ் டெஸ்டட் அண்ட் நாட் ஃபவுண்ட் வாண்டிங் தீஸ் கேசஸ் வில் பி அப் டேக்கன் அப் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ப்ரிலிமினரி in spiritual matters or endurance sectarianian is the greatest bar to our progress those who believe that god is without form are heard saying that to believe that god is with the form is an illusion and that the saints are only human beings then why should they bow down their heads before them and offer dakshina persons belonging to other sect will also raise objection and say why should they bow and offer allegiance to other saints leaving their own gurus similar objections regarding sai baba were heard before and even now some said that when they went to shirdi baba asked for dakshina from them is it good for saints should collect money in this fashion if they do so where is their sainthood but there are many instances where men went to shirdi to scoff but remain there to pray two such instances are given below kaka mahajani is friend a friend of kaka mahajani was a worshipper of nirgun god without form and was averse to idolatry out of curiosity he agreed to go to shirdi with kaka mahajani on two conditions that is that he would neither bow down to baba nor pay him any dakshina kaka agreed to these conditions and they both left mumbai on a saturday night and reached shirdi the next morning as soon as they put their feet on the steps of the masjid baba looked at the friend from a little distance addressed him in sweet words as follows oh welcome sir the tone in which he uttered those words was a very peculiar one it exactly resembled the tone of the friend's father it reminded him of his departed father and sent a thrill through his body what an enchanting power the tone had being surprised the friend said this is no doubt the voice of my father then he at once went up and forgetting his resolution placed his head upon baba's feet then baba asked for dakshina twice once in the morning and again at noon at the time of their taking leave but he asked it from kaka only and not from his friend the latter whispered to kaka baba asked for dakshina from you twice i am with you why does he ignore me you ask baba yourself was kaka's reply baba asked kaka what his friend was whispering then the friend asked baba himself whether he should pay any dakshina baba replied you have no mind to pay so you are not asked but if you want to pay now you may then the friend paid rupees 17 as dakshina the same amount that kaka paid baba then addressed him with a few words of advice you destroy the teli wall sense of difference between us so that we can see and meet each other face to face then baba allowed them to leave though the weather was cloudy and rough baba assured them of their safe journey and both of them reached mumbai safely when he reached home and opened the door and windows of his house he found two sparrows dead on the ground and one just flying out through a window he thought that if he had left that windows open the two sparrows would have been saved but thought again that they had met their lot and that baba had sent him back soon just to save the third sparrow kaka mahajani's master kaka was the manager in the firm of thakur dharmase jetbai a solicitor of mumbai both the master and the manager were on intimate terms mr thakur knew that kaka would often go to shirdi stay there for some days and return when baba permitted him out of curiosity mr thakur decided to go to shirdi with kaka during Shimga holidays as kaka return was uncertain he took another man with him for his company the three started together and kaka bought two shares of raisins dried grapes with seed on the way for presentation to baba they reached shirdi in due time 
and went to the masjid for darshan. Baba Sahib Tarkat was also there and Mr. Thakur asked him why he came there for darshan. Tarkat replied, Mr. Thakur asked if miracles took place there. Tarkat replied that to see miracles was not the concern. The earnest intentions of the bhaktas were satisfied here. Then Kaka prostrated himself before Baba and offered the raisins to him. Baba ordered him to be distributed. Mr. Thakur also gave a few of them. He did not want to have the raisins as he was advised by his doctor not to heat them without washing and cleaning them. So he was in a fix. He did not want to eat them nor could he reject them. To keep up formalities, he put them in his mouth but did not know what to do with the seeds. He could not spit them out on the floor of the masjid, so he pocketed them against his wish. He then said in his mind that if Baba was a saint, how could he be ignorant of his dislike for the raisins and how could he force them on him? When his thought arose in his mind, Baba again gave him some more raisins. He could not eat them, but he held them in his hands. Then Baba asked him to eat them up. He obeyed and found to his surprise that they were all seedless. He wanted to see miracles and here was one. He knew that Baba read his thought and as per his wish, converted raisins with seeds into seedless grapes. What a wonderful power! Again to test further, he asked Tarkat who was sitting by and who also got some raisins. What kind of grapes you got? He replied. The variety with seeds. Mr. Thakur was still more surprised to hear this. Then to confirm his faith further, Thakur thought in his mind that if Baba was a real saint, the raisin should be now given to Kaka first. Reading this thought also, Baba ordered that distribution should be commenced from Kaka. These proofs were sufficient to Thakur. Then Shama introduced Mr. Thakur as the master of Kaka, upon which Baba said, How could he be his master? He has got a different master altogether. Kaka appreciated this reply. After forgetting his resolve, Thakur saluted Baba and returned to the Wada. After the noon arti was over, they all went to the masjid for taking Baba's leave for the departure. Shama spoke to them. Baba then spoke as follows. There was a fickle-minded gentleman. He had health and wealth and was free from both physical and mental afflictions. But he took on needless anxieties and burdens and wandered hither and thither, thus losing his peace of mind. Sometimes he dropped the burdens and at other times carried them again. His mind knew no steadiness. On seeing his state, I took pity of him and said, Now keep your faith on one place you like. Why roam like this? Tatar at once understood that this was the exact description of himself. He wished that Kaka should also return with him, but no one expected that Kaka would be allowed to leave Shirdi so soon. Baba read this thought and also permitted Kaka to return with his master. Then Baba asked Kaka for rupees 15 as Dakshina and received it. He said, If I take one rupee as Dakshina from anybody, I have to return tenfold to him. I never take anything gratis. I never ask any one indiscriminately. I only ask and take from him whom the fakir, my guru, points out. If any one is indebted formally to the fakir, Dakshina is resolved from him. The donor gives, that is, sows his seeds only to reap a rich harvest in future. Wealth should be the means to work out dharma. If it is used for personal enjoyment, it is wasted. Unless you have given it before, you will not get it now. So the best way to receive is to give. The giving of Dakshina advances Vairagya, non-attachment, and thereby Bhakti and Dhyan give one and receive tenfold. On hearing these words, Mr. Thakur himself gave rupees 15 in Baba's hand. Forgetting his earlier resolve not to do so, he thought it was good that he came to Shirdi and all his doubts was solved and he learned so much. Baba still in handling such cases was unique. Though he conducted all that, he was totally non-attached to them. 
whether anybody saluted him or not or whether anybody gave him dakshina or not all were same to him he felt no pleasure if he was worshipped and felt no pain if he was disregarded he had transcended the paths of opposite that is pleasure and pain etc insomnia case a chhatra prabhu gentleman of bandra suffered from insomnia for long as soon as he lay down from sleep his departed father appeared to him in his dream abused and scolded him severely this disturbed his sleep and made him restless the whole night every night this went on and the man did not know what to do one day he consulted a devotee of baba in this respect he recommended the udi and the only infallible remedy he knew he gave him some of the udi and asked him to apply a little on his forehead before going to bed and keep the udi packet under his pillow he tried this remedy and found to his great surprise and joy that he had a sound sleep and there was no disturbance of any kind he continued the remedy and always remembered sai then he got a picture of sai baba which he hung on the wall near the pillow and started worshiping it daily and on thursdays offered garland nevedya etc then he got well and forgot his trouble altogether balaji patil niveshkar this man was a great devotee of baba he rendered excellent and selfless service every day he swept and cleaned all the passages and streets in shirdi through which baba passed in his daily routine after him this work was done equally well by another devotee radha krishna mai and after her by abdullah when balaji reaped his corn every year he brought the whole quantity and presented it to baba he returned with what baba gave him back and maintained himself and his family with it this course was followed by him for many years and after him by his son also power and efficacy of udi once it happened that on balaji's death anniversary a certain number of guests were invited and the dinner was prepared for them but at dinner time it was found that thrice the number of people invited turned up mrs nivaskar was in a fix she thought that the food would not suffice for the people assembled and if it fell short the honor of the family would be at stake her mother-in-law comforted her by saying don't be afraid it's not ours but size food cover every vessel with cloth putting some udi on it and serve for the same without opening it sai will save us from ignominy she did as she was advised and it was found that to their surprise and joy that not only did the food suffice for all but plenty of it remained after serving as one feels intently so he realizes accordingly was proved in this case sai appearing as serpent once ragu patel of shirdi went to balaji patel at nuves that evening he found that a serpent entered the cow shed hissing all the cattle was afraid and became restless the intimate of the house were frightened but balaji thought that it was sai who appeared in his house as a serpent without being afraid in the least he brought a cup of milk and placing it before the serpent said baba why do you hiss like this do you want to frighten us take this cup of milk and drink it with a calm mind saying this he sat down close by the other members were frightened and did not know what to do in a short time the serpent disappeared of his own and nobody knew where it went it was not found though a thorough search was made to the cowshed balaji had two wives and some children they sometimes went to shirdi from new case for taking baba's darshan then baba bought sarees and other clothes which were given to them with his blessings bow to shri sai peace be to all om shri sai ram